Nigel. Hello, hi Isabella. Thank you for coming. Oh, it's great to be here as always. I'm really uh, looking forward to hearing what you think about the rain tree. So here's the rain tree. That's it. So here's how big it is compared to my hand. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to ask your advice on what kind of a soil and pot would I be able to give it so that it grows like I'm hoping it would double in size. <laughs> They like moisture, humidity. Uh -huh. I mean, they're Brazilian, so anything you can get close to Brazilian weather, hot, steamy, tropical, they'll just take off in that kind of weather. If nice. you put the tree outside in the summer, you'll just see them. They just go like crazy. Oh, that's awesome. So you need, um, the soil has to be porous, but you have to water them often. Mm -hmm. Water and feed them often. They don't like sitting in uh, soggy soil, like uh, mm -hmm. if you have too fine of particles, it's too wet all the time. Okay. You may have to water it um, like two or three times in summer days. Okay. Mist that uh, they don't like, um, they don't like going dry. Mm -hmm. So yeah. <laughs> it needs a lot of care. Yeah, I, I would just, like a bigger pot, the tree will grow bigger. If mm -hmm. you keep it in a small pot, it'll stay small. Okay. So, all right. If That's you want it to double the size, double the size of the pot, let the roots grow, uh -huh. and it, it'll just keep growing with vigor. Yeah, there's always a balance between growth rate versus getting compact branches and that. So what kind of pot were you thinking for, Isabella? Okay, so before I tell you my idea, okay. Nigel, because uh, I don't want to bias you <laughs> with my <laughs> ideas, what, what would you suggest? So as far as a pot, got the light green of the new growth you've got the tan color on the bark and the bark usually the trunks have a bit of a greeny color to them mm -hmm. when they get older yeah so you can either you can either go opposites opposite colors mm -hmm. or you can go complementary colors and that's kind of up to you if you mm -hmm. want I would say you want the green to stand out. Yes. Uh, so I would go with the reddish colored pot. Okay. Because they're opposites, red and green. Mm -hmm. um, so anything from a purple to a red pot hmm. would oh. be the opposite if you want to yeah. really bring out the color of the tree, of the foliage. I would also want it not to compete uh, for attention right. with the tree because the foliage, there is so much going on already with the leaves that yeah. uh, I feel like you know, it's uh, it's beauty in its own, different shades of green. Yeah. So I was thinking of something neutral in something terms of more color. to the bark color? Maybe. Or balance between the tree and the pot. You mm -hmm. don't want either one to stand out. Like it's supposed to be, when you look at it, it it's nothing that... Your eye doesn't go to the pot first and it doesn't go to the tree first. It goes to the overall composition. Mm -hmm. so. That's a great point. Yeah, it's, uh, Thank you. Okay. So I think if I decide on the shape, then I can decide the glazing after the firing, but the shape is first. Now the shape is another question. <laughs> <laughs> Usually you'll have like a circular or an oval shaped canopy. Mm -hmm. So you can either go with the similar size shape pot, like mm -hmm. an oval, oval or a, a round pot. And then maybe that's monotonous. Maybe you've got the oval shaped canopy and then an oval shaped pot. Mm -hmm. So I found in my ficus with an oval shaped canopy looking from above, that the square pot actually looks nice on oh, okay. it because it's just a little bit different. It doesn't echo the shape of the canopy. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing to consider. They look good in both. Like I've had them in oval shaped pots and they look nice. But I, I find the square shape or rectangular shaped pot looks better with an oval shaped canopy just because it doesn't echo it exactly. That's that right. Way. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, wow. Thank you. So that's something else to consider. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah. So it actually tapers down. Mm -hmm. and, and then the tree could stretch outwards here. So let's see how that would look like with that shape, more or less. Okay, well, let's, let's draw the tree first. So kind of what we imagine the tree to look like someday. So we kind of wanted that, that round Brazilian rain tree style. So yeah, so you can either go like with a, a shallow kind of landscape pot, which will give you know a feeling of it being in nature. So 
That's neat. With a big canopy like that, usually, um, usually I want the pot just a little bit smaller than the canopy size. Okay. Uh, I should, maybe I should have made the pot a little smaller, but... Uh, it's still quite shallow. It's like, would you say it'd be like one inch? I, I would say taller than that. A little uh, taller than that, okay. I would say to get drainage. The shallower the pot is, the less mm -hmm. drainage you get in the soil. It, it'll stay wet mm -hmm. longer. I see. Which can be good in the summer, but bad in the fall. So I've always had the feeling that you can always water more, but you can't water less when it's outside in the rain and that. That's so right, yeah. If you're home to water, you can you can have poor soil and mm -hmm. you know you can go out there a couple of times a day and miss it and water. But, mm -hmm. So that, that's one possibility. The other possibility, if you just look at the shape again, um, is to have a deeper pot and a smaller pot. But I think... My feeling is with the wider canopy, it looks a little, bit unbalanced. It looks a little tippy, mm -hmm. uh, and you know you can with feet and that it might. Uh, I I think it's like the maples and that you know when you get the big full mm -hmm. umbrella canopy you need the shallower oval or rectangular pots, mm -hmm. landscape kind of pot to kind of it kind of mirrors the top of the tree. I think something like this pot, you know, if, if you get a canopy up here, you're going to get a wind come up and That's it's probably right. going to tip your pot over too. Yeah, I haven't thought of that. <laughs> Thank I, you. I've, I've had a tree, I had a tree that had a fairly big canopy on it and it wasn't in a real big pot and the wind came under the bench and lifted the entire tree and pot off the bench and it was lying on the ground. Oh no. It didn't break anything, the pot or the tree or anything. It just like did a Mary Poppins where it, oh, just, it just flew up and landed. Kind of like a parachute yeah. <laughs> landing. So, some people wire their pots down to the bench because if you're in stormy conditions mm -hmm. that can happen. Mm -hmm. But I, I think, you know, it's hard to imagine your tree looking like this but someday it will I'm hoping so yeah. you think I should do the pot hoping like yeah to keep it there for many years I, I think just so like a destination pot rather than a transition pot yeah or you know you could have a smaller scale of this pot and this kind of slowly work up in sizes mm -hmm. um, and yeah I mean, this pot could be round, it could be rectangular, it could be oval. But I think a longer pot like that, a shallower and longer pot, would yeah. really suit the tree. Mm -hmm. And I think with that big canopy, you're going to need something stable looking underneath it. So Isabella has some sample colors of glazes out here, and we're trying a couple of different ones. And this one, it complements both the trunk color and the color on the leaves. It's kind of... It's really nice. The only thing is it, it almost disappears, I find. Whereas the tan color, it also matches the trunk color nicely and it's a little brighter. It kind of makes the pot stand out a little more. Does that make sense? Yeah, sort it of? does. I, I see that. And I think, you know, if you did have moss on the top of the pot, You've got the green foliage, the green moss, and the green pot. It, it all is very muted, mm -hmm. and it may not... It might be just not... Uh, may, yeah, it may be just too bland looking, mm -hmm. if that's possible. <laughs> I don't know. Whereas this will, I think this will make everything pop a little more. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's still, it's very complementary to the color of the trunk, and it's just bright enough that it, it kind of will make everything pop out a bit, I think. Nice. That's a great advice. Thank you, Nigel.
Well, this color certainly matches the trunk, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. it's very, very close. Mm -hmm. That's nice. You can put it in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's see. Well, the pot's okay. already looking not so large, is it? No, you're right. And once the roots will be spread out, I feel yeah. like they will... It'll take a few years. Mm -hmm. I just watched a video on YouTube about Brazilian rain trees. It was like a, almost a two hour long video. Mm. And they said it's one of the few trees that you can develop in a pot and you will eventually get a really thick trunk and branch really? structure. Yeah. Okay. Because I guess there's such vigorous growers that you don't need to put them in the ground to develop mm -hmm. a thick trunk. And then the bonsai soil, just like regular bonsai pots, they will still grow? Like it does yeah. not have to be a nursery deep pot? No, no. They're, okay. They said it's one of the few trees you can develop all its life in a bonsai pot and you'll eventually get a really thick and big tree. That's a great information. Yeah. Did you yeah. have an observation that you wanted to share? I well, I, I think, I think once the tree is planted and you have the pot is the color of the trunk and then you'll have the green moss here, which mm. will be kind of the color of the leaves, that you'll get the tan, green, tan, green. Wow. And I, I think it'll it'll look really good, I think. Mm -hmm. I think it'll look fabulous. Yeah, I'm really happy with it. <laughs> and this is just growing, like, probably by the end of summer, if you don't prune it, these tips will be this long. It'll mm -hmm. be huge. And the trunk will double in thickness. And, yes. And it'll probably get higher, too. Yeah, I, I think, you know, it'll take a couple of years before it looks really good in the pot, maybe even three years, but mm -hmm. it'll get there. Okay, nice. And it's a good size to develop the tree. Thank you for uh, inspiring me and teaching me how to make a pot uh, for the Brazilian rain tree. Like, I wouldn't think of that uh, that size, so that was really eye-opening. <laughs> I hope. I hope you're really happy with this someday. I think it'll take a while for the grain tree to grow into the pot, but mm -hmm. definitely that'll encourage it to grow, that's for sure. That's great. Thank you, Nigel.